Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ty, and welcome to the first episode of The Legends of Man. This podcast is all about mythology, urban legends, and folklore. I'm talking Greek to Norse, Kuchisake Ona to the Goat Man, Laiorona to Baba Yaga. If you got any of those references, this is definitely the place for you. And if you didn't, stick around so you can learn about them. Today's episode, we are heading into Greek mythology. These days, I've heard many people saying they feel trapped and imprisoned in their own home because they can't go anywhere. That got me thinking about some Greek mythology stories about people who aren't heading anywhere anytime soon, but have it much worse. So I've found five stories pertaining to that theme that might interest you. This first story is a short one about Atlas. He is one of the titans that fought against the gods alongside the leader of the titans, Kronos. When they lost, Atlas got punished by being bound in chains and forced to hold up the heavens forever. He was stuck there, unable to move, and the only way he would be free as if someone else took his place. Moving along into story number two, this one is about Ixion. Now Ixion was the king of Lapiths, and he wanted to marry the daughter of another king called Dionysus. Ixion promised Dionysus a payment of sorts for her hand in marriage, and he agreed. Fast forward after the marriage, Dionysus asked Ixion for his payment, but received nothing. Instead of taking that lying down, he took some of Ixion's prized horses, and Ixion responded by killing his father-in-law. Now this was a big deal for him to kill one of his own relatives. Ixion was kicked out of his own kingdom and was shunned by everyone. The only person who took pity on him was Zeus and even invited him to Mount Olympus. Now guess what this man decided to do when he got there? He disregarded the pardon Zeus gave him and tried to sleep with his wife Hera. In some iterations, it said he did this as payback because Zeus slept with Ixion's wife in the past. But regardless of the reason, you never disrespect Zeus in his own home. So Hera told her husband and Zeus decided to test Ixion. He created a doppelganger of Hera from a cloud and sent her to him. Surprise, surprise, he failed the test and slept with the doppelganger. It said that she then gave birth to the centaurs. Having done this, Zeus punished him by sending him to the underworld and strapped him to a flaming wheel, kind of like a forever moving merry go on fire. Next up is Prometheus. Prometheus is one of Atlas' brothers, but was smart and sided with the gods during the war. Some say he was the one who made mankind out of clay. He had our backs. He stole fire and gave it to man, and also tricked Zeus by having him choose the worst parts of animals for sacrifice and letting us keep the good parts for ourselves. He looked out for us, but at the cost of pissing off Zeus. Zeus had Prometheus bound to a pillar, and an eagle would come down every day and eat his liver, only for it to regrow and the cycle would repeat. This torture was also primarily done in order to get Prometheus to tell Zeus which of his children would take his throne. On the bright side, he was freed later on by Hercules. Story number three is about King Sisyphus, known to be a pretty clever dude. So one day, he noticed a giant eagle carrying a girl. Then the river god Asopus came along and asked him if he had seen his daughter. Sisyphus then realized that the girl must have been her and the eagle must have been Zeus because it was too large to be a regular one. So Sisyphus tells Asopus what he saw. Zeus, angered by the fact that he was snitched on by a mortal, calls up his boy Death and says, I want him dead. And Death was like, say no more, I got you fam. So Death, along with his chains, finds Sisyphus in order to carry him to the underworld. But Sisyphus had a plan. He asked Death how he intended to take him, and Death showed them how to use the chains. With that knowledge, he managed to trap Death, and nobody was able to die. Now, depending on the iteration, it said that Ares, the god of war, intervened because no one was dying in his wars and freed Death. Others say that Hades was the one who freed death because no one was being sent to the underworld. Either way, after death was freed, he came again for Sisyphus, but he had another plan. He told his wife not to bury him the proper way by not putting coins on his eyes and mouth. By doing this, when he died, he had no coins for Charon to ferry him across the river Styx. He then finds Persephone, wife of Hades and queen of the underworld and pleads with her to send him back to the land of the living to tell his wife how to properly bury him. After fulfilling his request, Sisyphus was a freed man again. So Zeus then took matters into his own hands 
and sent him back into the underworld and punished him by having him push a boulder up a hill every day only for it to roll back down to the bottom. Now we come to the tale of Tantalus. He was also a king and one of Zeus's sons. He was even allowed at the banquets of the gods, but he was known to be wicked. Tantalus would steal the food of the gods, Ambrosia, and eat it for himself in hopes of becoming immortal. Then for some inexcusable reason that only made sense to him, he invited all the gods to the feast and tried to feed them food that contained chopped up pieces of his own sud. I'm talking Arya Stark type stuff. The gods noticed this and sent him to the underworld, where he was placed in the pond under a fruit tree. When he got thirsty, he tried to bend down to drink, but the water would be out of his reach. When he got hungry, he tried to reach some food, but they too would find themselves out of his reach. He was forced to stand there to forever starve and thirst. An extra story I found for you guys about imprisonment was the one of Danae. She was the princess of Argos and daughter of King Acrisius. Now King Acrisius wanted a son and he went to the oracle to ask if his wish would come true. Instead, he was told that his daughter would have a son who would come for his life. Initially, he wanted to kill his daughter to prevent this from happening but feared what the gods would do to him for murdering his own kin. So he decided to lock her in a tower to prevent her from ever giving birth. However, this plan fails when Zeus becomes infatuated with her and sleeps with her. She then gives birth to the boy named Perseus. The rest of the story is pretty interesting and I'd love to cover it for you guys one day, but that's all the time we have for this episode. You can check out the podcast on Spotify, SoundCloud, and Breaker.audio. If you think I've missed any imprisonment stories, tweet at me at The Legends of Man on Twitter. I hope you guys have a good day. See ya.